Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson from Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining me this morning to uh, watch and, and read the scriptures live. We're reading the scriptures, uh, the 25th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, continuing to read the scriptures live every single day. And uh, thank you for joining. If you're watching on a replay, or if you're watching live, uh, and I'm excited. And I always say, uh, to me personally, the book of Deuteronomy is my favorite book of the scriptures. It sums up uh, the Torah and, and the life Moses uh, was giving, uh, telling the people before his life was over and he was about to descend. Let's uh, first get into prayer here and read Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 9 and the Shema uh, before we continue. Uh, Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kivu. Mahutov Leolam Ba'ed. Hero Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And as we continue to read those verses, it says, And you shall live, well, and you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day. Be upon your heart. These words are the gui the guideline and the instructions of our Creator. Uh, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak to them when, uh, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, uh, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house. Uh, and upon the gates. You see, this, what he was telling everyone, and what his prayer says, and what it's saying here is how instruct, how the instructions should run our lives, the instructions of our Creator, uh, found in the first five books of the Bible, known as the Torah. Uh, you know, it's, it's called in the Renewed Covenant, people say the Old Testament is a schoolmaster. Well, I want a schoolmaster, especially if the teacher is Yahweh. Hallelujah. And uh, and what a great teacher to learn from. And he's given us a book that has every single word that pertains to will for our lives. So uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, with that. And I think uh, uh, to to neglect it is uh, not not a wise thing at all. I think we should uh, follow it and live it and uh, and praise Yahweh for it and uh, and treat it with that much reverence. Because this is something that's going to just benefit us. Uh, you know, the greatest wisdom of the world. Uh, you know, the scriptures say that uh, we need to avoid things of, of divination, like like horoscopes and things like that. These detestable things. But people are curious about uh, their lives and the way they should go. Well, uh, you got a Bible right in your house, so why don't you read that? And uh, this is the truth and the way. And uh, we need to follow that and understand that. So hallelujah. So we're reading chapter 25 of the book of Deuteronomy today. And, uh, and we're reading the Bible every single day. We've gotten through it. Now, 25 is a chapter that a lot of people won't understand and they won't comprehend because uh, times are certainly different today. And the things that are mentioned here in this chapter uh, not only will not make sense, uh, people would run away from the ideas here in this chapter, but we need to dig deeper and say, why would our creator give us these guidelines and instructions? And we have to remember uh, his goal. Now, first of all, it's not a mosaic covenant. Mo Moses, <laughs> Moses was just reiterating what Yahweh told him to tell the community. You know, we don't say uh, the Jeremiah covenant or the Ezekiel covenant or all these other prophets. No, uh, they're messages for Yahweh. And so was Moses. And, and 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 as we see here, uh, every single word, law, or command of Yahweh is given for a reason. And the goal of Yahweh, which is which is shown all throughout these scriptures here, is to purge the evil from among them when they go into the promised land, so the community can be pure and holy. That's his goal. That's what his desire is. And Moses wasn't going in with them. Because uh, Moses was about to die here. And so when you go went in, these are things you shall do and you shall not do. 
And we're going to read, we're going to be looking at these two translations today. One is the Hebraic Roots Bible and one is the uh, one is the New Living Testament we're going to read. Verse 25. Uh, verse 25. So let's look and it says, uh, Suppose two people take a dispute to court and the judges declare that one is right and the other is wrong. If the person that is wrong, wait, if the person in the wrong is sentenced to be flagged, the judge must command him to lie down and be beaten in his presence with a number of lashes appropriate for the crime. But never give more than 40 lashes. More than 40 lashes will be public, immuni uh, public uh, humiliation of your neighbor. And the New Living Testament here says, if there is a contention between a man and they come to judgment and they have been judged and the righteous one is declared righteous, and the wrongdoer declared guilty, then it shall be the wrongdoer is the uh, son of stripes. The judge shall cause him to fall down and shall strike him before his face. Enough for his weaknesses, uh, for 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 his weak uh, weak for his wickedness by number. Uh, and it says he may give forty stripes. Uh, he shall not add more. At least if he should uh, exceed that, beat him above these that many stripes, then your brother would be dishonored before your eyes. So this is verses one to three uh, we see here in this principle. And some people think this is kind of cruel, uh, that somebody would be whipped and beat up. And uh, I tell you, I traveled this world, and one of my favorite countries in the world because I felt so safe was, was Singapore. And this is exactly what they do in Singapore. They'll take a a wicked person out and give them public humiliation and they'll whip them for as many whips as it takes uh, for the crime. Uh, I'll tell you, there's very little crime out there. They're not putting the, the person uh, for their, let's say, let's call it a misdemeanor. They're not throwing him in jail in a nice, comfortable jail cell. They're, uh, they're really making sure this person understands what he did wrong so he doesn't do it again. And uh, some people say that sounds cruel and mean and that would never work in our society. Well, our society is not living according to Yahweh's guidelines and instructions. And this is why uh, we, we have many of the problems we have. The judicial system is, is completely uh, against uh, the system that Yahweh put in order here. And when he says things in his Bible that a disobedient kid or a person picking up a stick on the Shabbat or, or, or somebody doing this should be put to death. Well, uh, these are things that were supposed to take place. And they didn't have to happen because the people knew, the, knew about the penalty of death, and uh, and and these things just didn't happen. They didn't need to be carried out. Just the people knew. The people were were, were not going to get themselves in the problems. Well, the same thing here with with this. It wasn't death, but it was a, a, a it was a, a consequence or a result of people's wickedness. So let's look at uh, some of the notes here and. Uh, in the Hebraic Roots Bible, it says, at first glance, it says, at first glance, uh, these verses appear uh, irrelevant to today, but a closer look reveals some important principles about discipline. Are you responsible for the discipline of a child, a student, or an employee? Uh, three important points will help you carry out your responsibility. Number one, let the punishment follow quickly after the offense. Number two, let the degree of punishment reflected the seriousness of the offense. And number three, don't overdo the punishment. Discipline that is swift, just, and restrained makes the point while preserving the dignity of the offender. So that's a, a great note here in the, in the Hebraic root scriptures of this, of this verse. And in the New Living Testament, it says, uh, it says here, well, I don't know if there is a note here for this uh, this verse here, chapters 1 to 25. No, uh, it says, uh, in the second temple time, the Sahedrin court had experts who were used when, scour when, when, when uh, scourging a, a, a prisoner or whipping a prisoner. Due to this scripture, they would make a whip with 13 leather lashes and would whip the prisoner three times. Every part of the body was fair game. 
Also attached to the end of each whip would be rocks, glass, pieces of stone, and other sharp objects to inflict greater pain. Uh, so this is the Sanhedrin talk, uh, court taking us to a whole nother level of just uh, just the, the idea of being whipped. And uh, we see here later on the flag, flagging of Yeshua, our Messiah, and uh, the injustice that comes from that. Uh, and, and we'll look at that when we get up to that. But this was just something that that was done. And, uh, and, and they didn't have issues uh, like they have today, <laughs> uh, certainly. Let's look at verse 4. And verse 4 says, Verse 25, you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from treading out grain. Uh, so uh, the note here says, what is the point of the Old Testament regulation? Ox were often used to thread out the grain on threshing floor. The animal was attached by poles to a large millstone. As it walked around the millstone, its hooves trampled the ground, separating the kernels from the sheft, from the sheft. At the same time, the millstone ground grain into flour. To muzzle the ox would prevent it from eating while it was working. Paul used this illustration in the Renewed Covenant to argue that people uh, productive in ministry should not be denied its benefits. They should receive financial support. And then it says, the fact is that a person in ministry doesn't mean he or she should be uh, unfairly paid. There is also a broader application. Don't be stingy with those who work for you. So these are some of the notes, and that's what it says here in uh, in uh, in in uh, New Living Testament. The note here now in uh, in this says, uh, "You shall not muzzle an axe." Or he is a treading out uh, while he is treading out grain, uh, and it gets into uh, notes and it, it recommends uh, seeing uh, the book in Timothy and it says go to First Timothy and see what it says there. Uh, so if we if we turn over to First Timothy, uh, verse five, seven to eighteen, you don't have to turn there. I'll turn it for you and just give you an example. It says it says let the elders who minister well be counted worthy of a double pay, especially those laboring in the word and doctrine. <laughs> For the scriptures say, you shall not muzzle an ox, uh, muzzle an ox treading out grain, and the laborer is worthy of his pay. That's verses uh, 20, uh, we, this is summing up verses of Deuteronomy 25, 4. Uh, so it says, is the right of an elder working full time in the work of Yahweh to be able to receive tithes for his living sustenance. Paul waived this right not to put a stumbling block before some of the uh, believers. So uh, this was a right that they had. They did not have to accept it. Uh, but this is one of the uh, concepts of, of saying uh, don't muzzle an ox while it's doing its work. So some people won't understand this. Uh, it says in 1 Corinthians uh, verse 9, 9, it says, uh, For it has been written in the Torah of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox, treading out grain. Is Elohim concerned only for the ox? This is very interesting. So stay with me, folks. So it says, uh, No, it is known that he said for our, it's for our sakes, and it is written because of us, so that one plowing ought to plow in hope, and in the one thre uh, threshing in hope to partake of the fruit. So if we have sowed spiritual things to you, is it greater things we shall reap upon uh, your fleshly things? If others have this authority over you, have we not a greater right? But we did not use this authority, but we endured all things so that we might not give a hindrance to the good news for Messiah. And... It says here, Paul claims this uh, this as a right, but also states that he has passed the right not to cause an offense to the brethren. 
Paul goes further to state that the giving of tithes for ministers to live on is a mandate directly from Yeshua. Many have abused this mandate and instead of taking simple living expensive, have taken uh, e elaborate salaries with expensive luxuries. This was never uh, mandated by Messiah. And uh, so we see that uh, in, as the notes here. So the tithe, or at least paying uh, for the work that was done by the Levites, was uh, was not something that was uh, missed. It was something that was done during that time. And this is the concept. You shall not muzzle an ox when it is treading out grain. Now, verse 5. Now, verse 5 is something that's a lot of controversy over, but uh, not even controversy over. This is something that many Christians will just laugh at. But. I would think seriously before laughing at what our creator uh, says in the scriptures as his guideline instruction. It says, verse five, if brothers live together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead shall go to out, go outside to a strange man, shall not go outside to a strange man. Her brother-in-law shall go into her and take her to himself for a wife, and he shall perform the duty of the uh Leverite, Leverite, the, the, the Leverite. Uh, and it shall be the firstborn which she bears shall rise up for his dead brother's name, and the name shall not be wiped out from Israel. And if the man does not desire to take her brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gate to the elders and say, my husband's brother is refusing to raise the name to his brother in Israel. He has not been willing to perform the duty of my, uh, of my, 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 my Leverite. And the elders of the city shall call him and then speak to him. And he shall stand and say, I have no desire to take her. Then the brother's wife shall draw near to him before the elders and shall take his shoe from his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so it shall be done to the man who will not build up the house of his brother. And his name will be called in Israel, the house of him whose shoe was taken off. So this is uh, uh, this is this is something that uh, many people don't understand today, or they think is just some joke or something like this. Well, let's go and look at verses five to ten. It says uh, in the note is called uh, is called the law of the uh, Levite and shows the importance of ancient days about continuation of seed of a family and inheritance in the eye of the people. Dying without a hire was about the worst thing that could happen to someone. And it talks about that in, uh, in several other scriptures about dying without inheritance. Uh, and let's look at the note here in the New Living Testament, and then I'm going to explain this more clearly. Uh, Uh, two brothers are living, uh, uh, are living together on the same property, and one of them dies without a son. His widow may not be married to anyone from outside the family. Instead, her husband's brother should marry uh, her and have an intercourse with her to fulfill the duties of the brother-in-law. The first son she bears to him will be considered the son of the dead brother, so that the name will not be forgotten. And then, uh, so it says, this law describes the live right marriage the marriage of a widow to the brother of her dead husband. The purpose of such a marriage was carried on the dead man's name and inheritance. Family ties were an important aspect of the Israelite culture. The best way to uh, remember was through your line of descendants. If a widow married someone outside the family, her first husband's line would come to an end. But Tamar fought for this right in Genesis 38. And then it goes on to say, uh, this uh, this uh, repeating or this giving his instructions uh, of Yahweh's uh, dealings with his people helped the people remember what Yahweh had done for them. What is the history of your relationship with Yahweh? Can you put into clear? Uh, Well, that's that, never mind that note. We'll go back to the other. That was a different note. But uh, so we see here several different things with this principle. And remember looking at the principle and the pattern 
uh, of our Creator. Uh, and the principle of the pattern of our Creator is uh, to take care of the needy and to take care of the widow. And uh, Yahweh uh, was uh, all for uh, the widows and taking care of the widows. And this was a way to protect the widows uh, was that they wouldn't be alone or some stranger wouldn't come upon them, uh, that they would marry the brother uh, of the next, uh, the, the, the keen of the brother that just died. Uh, now, so this is actually a woman having the right to propose uh, to one of the men and saying, well, you got to marry me now according to the law. And we saw this uh, with Tamar in, in the book of Judah. And we also saw this with uh, Ruth in the book of Ruth, uh, that this was carried out. So not only was it protecting uh, the, the, uh, the widow, but it was carrying the family line uh, of the people of the community back then. Now, uh, another thing that's important to understand here is too, everything was done on the family level. And if a man went, uh, found a wife that he wanted to marry, he didn't just uh, blatantly marry her without uh, the consideration of the rest of the family, because this wasn't just now in a personal thing. This was now a family affair, because if something was to happen to the brother that the man married, uh, you know, the wife was going to come to one of the keen of the brother and say, well, now we got to perform this, this, this law or so on. So all the brothers uh, were going to make sure that this woman was, uh, was, was a decent woman or somebody that they, they would even consider. Uh, and if they all had a problem, <laughs> they better make sure that the brother was in pretty good health or, or something because uh, uh, they didn't want this to happen. So, you know, we see Yahweh's provision of Yahweh giving them an opportunity to refuse and the consequences of it. Uh, but, the, the, but the idea... Uh, that Yahweh had and what he wanted for the people was also given. And uh, we look more about this and we'll see in the book of Ruth and uh, the beautiful story and what happens there. So uh, this, this really important principles that are followed all throughout the Renewed Covenant. And we see Paul uh, repeating many of these things from the Torah and the Renewed Covenant as well, uh, which, is, which is very important. Uh, interesting and important to understand for those people that say it's done away with. Well, it was done away with. Why do you keep repeating it so much, right? Let's go to uh, verse uh, 11. When men fight together, a man and his brother, the wife of the one shall come near to deliver of a husband from the assailant's hand, and she shall put out a hand and lay hold on his genitals. Uh, then uh, you shall cut off his palm, uh, the uh, off her palm. Your eye shall not pity. You shall not have your bag. Uh, you shall not have your bag a stone and a stone weight and a great a uh, sm uh, and great and small. You shall not have your house an ephod and an ephod a great uh, and a small. You shall not have a perfect and just weight. You shall have a perfect and just ephod so that you prolong your days in the land which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. For anyone doing these things is hateful to Yahweh, uh, your Elohim, and everyone doing unrighteousness. So we're going to look at that, and we're going to read that in the New Living Testament. It's going to come a little bit clearer. Uh, so it says in verse 4, verses 13 and 16, In ancient times, many things were uh, barred, and a seller would have used the scale of weights, in measure, and some dishonored people have false weights or measures with the intention to cheat people. And let's look at verses uh, 13 to 16 here. And, and Well, let's start in verse 11. If two Israelite men get into a fight and the wife of one tries to rescue her husband by grabbing the testicles of the other man, you must cut off her hand and show her no pity. So we see here from Yahweh that this was a, a detestable thing, a thing that shall not be done. And in verse 13, you must use accurate scales when you weigh out merchandise, and you must use full and honest measures. Yes, always use honest weights and measures so that you may enjoy a long life in the land Yahweh has given you. All who cheat with dishonor weights and measures are detestable to Yahweh your Elohim. So uh, everyone... Uh, coming to give 
uh, trying to cheat their fellow brother, their fellow Israelite, was actually cheating Yahweh and destroying the community. And Yahweh said that that must not be done because the consequence of being honest was a good long life. That was the scriptures say. Uh, and, and, and that was the point. A good long life was the consequences uh, of, of, of being honest here. And then finally, verse 17, never forget what the Amicalites did to you as you came into Egypt. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary, and they struck you down, those who were struggling behind. They had no fear of Yahweh. Therefore, when Yahweh Elohim has given you rest, from your enemies in the land he has given you as a special possession, you must destroy the Amicalites and erase their memory from under the heaven. Never forget this. So we're told here in the scriptures of how to prolong uh, the Israelite line, but also how to destroy the line of the Amicalites and why that they needed to be destroyed. Now, these were important guidelines and instructions that Moses was given. Moses knew via Yahweh what the future was going to hold. And Moses made sure that these things were upheld uh, when the children went into the promised land. It protected the families from mingling the seed with the, the, with the heathens, with the, with the Canaanites that were around them, to keep everything within the, the, the community of Israel and within the family lines to, the, for the lines to carry on and the land to be possessed. Uh, by the allotment, the correct allotment that Yahweh had for them. So, uh, so that was uh, what was what the the, the scripture uh, was 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 talking about and explaining here in the, in these particular areas. And uh, if anyone wants to see my shirt, it says Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. There you go. All right, so uh, so that is chapter 25 of the book of Deuteronomy. I hope that made sense to you and is clear to you. Uh, please don't question Yahweh's word as, as being wrong because the ways seem better today. Uh, we need to look at the principles and the goal of Yahweh. Uh, whipping another man, uh, another man taking the, uh, the wife of his, of, uh, of his dead brother and these things seem uh, barbaric and, and, and cruel and out of line today to some degree if you look at it from a different standpoint. Um, but when you look at the whole Torah of Yahweh and his idea of purging out evil from the community uh, and keeping the community set apart and holy, and then you think about these principles and you think about the goals uh, and you think about what was taking place back then from a communal standpoint, and you think about the whole family getting involved when the decision of marriage was even being considered. And you think about uh, the mercy that Yahweh gives by just uh, whipping somebody and, and, and to, pr to pr uh, promote the holiness of the community instead of uh, utterly destroying them and, and humiliating them. When you think about the love Yahweh had for the community, uh, that he would express and remind them to destroy uh, Amalek and everything from it. When you think about the beauty and all these things, this is a beautiful chapter. And this is a, a chapter that even saying here that the, with the principle of not muzzling the ox with the grain, that a man would be uh, paid for his, his service to the, to the community or the Levite service to the community. This is a, an important chapter and expresses Yahweh's love and holiness for everyone. So, uh, uh, you know, I mean, and, and just he even gives a way out of these laws uh, that, you know, marrying, uh, the brother marrying the, the, the dead brother's wife, if he didn't want to, could it go to the next of Keen? Well, we saw that with Ruth, that's what happened. Ruth went to one of a uh, relatives and then he had the right and then he passed up that right. And then we saw uh, uh, she her get married again, and uh, so 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 we see it put into practice. So these weren't just a uh, given, um, but they were put into practice. And uh, and, and and as for widows, uh, you know, you know, some people would say the book of the Bible is is, is a book, uh, a man's book, and a book to protect men. But I would suggest that 
It protects women just as much, if not even more. And uh, the idea of protecting widows and orphans is all over the scriptures. And, uh, and, and, and the scriptures are so clear and beautiful when it comes to the protection of widows. And when you look at what it says about widows. Uh, so, so anyone questioning this, you just don't yet have a good handle on Yahweh's Torah and what it's saying. And, and the, the principle and the goals of this. Times are completely different today, I understand. And we're not following out and carrying out the always traditional order. Uh, but uh, it's not going to be a situation where uh, a brother's murdering his brother to get his, uh, his brother's wife or something crazy like that. There was a holiness uh, to a family uh, of these tribes, of these people that went in, or at least supposed to be. And there were... Uh, exclusions and exceptions to these laws and guidelines and instructions so if something like this happened and a brother murdered a brother to get his brother's wife or something like that well the murderers were going to be put to death so that wasn't going to happen uh and, and we see things like this so uh you know that that's what it says here and that's yah's word so if you have a problem with something that was said you need to look at it more closely because Yahweh gave these guidelines and instructions for a reason. Remember, they weren't given by Moses uh, or, or made up by, by man. They were made up from our wonderful creator. And uh, I'm thankful so because we look at the story of Ruth and we see uh, how uh, a foreigner was accepted in uh, and, and the principles were applied. And what came from that was the line of Yeshua. So uh, praise Yahweh for that. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody, for watching today. Put your comments, questions below the video. Please share this with others. We're going to close with the uh, ironic benediction. And we are here every morning at 5.30 a.m. Eastern time during the week to, to read these uh, scriptures. Uh, so we're going to close here with uh, Numbers 6, 24 to 26. Eureka! Yahweh! Mirishka Rikaka! Yahweh, Yahweh, Panana, Laka, Vokanika, Yosi, Yahweh, Panana, Laka, Vesem, Maka, Shalom. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his cons upon you and give you peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody, and Shalom, Shalom.